we are going to be doing some bucktail jigs this morning. Got an order I still need to finish up. and I've done some with high corn. We're going to do some with bucktail. We're going to do some with uh, rubber skirts. Kind of see what we come up with. Get this order wrapped up, tied up, and headed to Florida. I'll throw a little red in there with it. If you're on and you're watching right now, let me know where you're from. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know who we got on here. Kind of experimenting with times, seeing when's the best time to go live. Fishing with Fredo. What's up, buddy? I want it to be out crappie fishing today, but that wind is like howling 25 miles an hour today, sustained. Ain't even worth it. Got a full weekend off work, and the wind has been horrible the last two days. Let's see. Let's flash this one up a little bit. Let's put some red. Red flash in it. I've seen that whole body twist on me right there. Didn't quite get that first couple wraps tight enough. It's one thing you got to be careful with when you're tying with bucktails keeping a good glue base on it and keeping it tight. But when I go back and put my UV resin on, my UV resin will harden all the way from the neck, clear up over the head, it'll kind of turn into a one-piece thing and it won't move anymore. But that glue underneath, I really don't think had a uh, good chance to set up yet. That's what I needed to been doing today too, is organizing this when I'm mom and dad passed away. I brought a bunch of stuff back up in my garage is just packed with stuff right now can't hardly walk around I, I don't know if I could have got the boat out today even if I wanted to but if you're running that issue when you're tying a bucktail jig and that bucktail starts to spin on you if you're going to use the UV resin, it'll totally take care of that issue. You won't have to worry about it. But we're going to harden them up just a little bit, and then we're going to take them outside and set them in the sun and let the sun do the rest of the work. Justin's Fish and Fetish. What's up, buddy? Try the UV resin. Uh, the UV resin will harden those eyes down a whole lot. I trust it more than I trust the Sally Hansen's. Just a rock solid cure when it's done. And like I said, I'm gonna get it kind of where it's kind of set up with the light. And then after I get done, I'm gonna take them all outside and I'm gonna set them out in the sunlight. It takes. 45 seconds maybe to harden them up. But once it hardens up, it'll still look like that. It'll still have that shiny look to it. It'll still look like it's really wet, and it's not. Definitely try the UV resin. I, I promise you, you will love what the UV resin does. It's kind of a game changer, especially when it comes to tying bucktails or even, even your normal jigs. I've been taking the UV resin... Once I get done tying the jig, I take that UV resin and I brush it down inside the neck and let it harden up. Mike Packer, the um, peak rotary vise, the only vise I would use. 
if I have to guess, I'd say Mr. Zach is probably in his room playing Xbox, if I'd have to guess right now. I'm not sure. I ain't seen him yet this morning. Uh, but back to the Peak Rotary Vice for the money and what you get, it is the best vice, in my opinion, on the market. Uh, I haven't tried very many of the other ones. But I just, I really like using the Peak Rotary Vice. Uh, I've added a few ex accessories to it. Let me show you what I got. I got the material holder right there to help hold your chenille. I splurged, spent the $10 on the handle for it. Jaws adjust, tighten, loosen with just a little turn of that nut right there. Don't take much. Um, your jaw area has a really good gripping distance. A lot of room there to grab a hold of it. Keeps it pretty tight. I really, really like the Peak. Really like the Peak. Several places you can get it from. Plateau Fly Shop in Springfield. I'm pretty sure you can call them and get it from them. Uh, Bass Pros, Cabela's should have it. If you can't find it from them, try going using a uh, check it with Ruben Flores. Pretty sure he's an authorized dealer still. Might be a good spot to get it. Love the peak for the money. It is so definitely worth it. Very smooth, very easy to use. I have two of them. I've got another one set up over there. I was thinking about uh, bought that one for Zach to use. He uses it sometimes. I was honestly thinking about doing maybe some time classes in the garage and having that extra one for that. Kind of see how it goes. See if I got anybody that's interested in that. That um, I've got all the other ones I started out with. I still have all of them. There wasn't nothing wrong with them. I just kind of got to the point where I don't know, I just kind of advanced one of something that was a little bit easier. But if you're in the market for a new vice, definitely get a rotary vice. You definitely want one that you can turn, put your Chanel on. I'll be tying some with some Chanel here in a little bit, and I'll show you how it helps. Um, let's scoot that down a little bit before we can see it. I would think so, too. And I've had some people ask me about it before, whether or not I'd be interested in teaching them, if I would teach them how to tie. It's kind of coming up with the time to do it or the way to do it. But I think I might end up doing it. Maybe I'll do it. Um, maybe like on uh, maybe some kind of social media or something like that or just have you come over to my garage and sit down and I'll supply the material, the vice, and, you know, give it a try. A lot of people want to try it, but don't want to put the money in to get the vice and the material, the tools. So, you know, it might be a good way to find out if it's something you want to do or. Never know, it's worth a shot. To get into it. You know, it's just like anything else. You can put as much money into it as you want, or you can go as cheap as you want. You know, the end result is a jig you're coming up with. If you're not selling them and you're using them for yourself, then, you know, if it makes you happy, tie it. That was the reason I started tying, because I wanted a jig the way I wanted it, when I wanted it. And that was kind of the reason I started time for myself. A lot of great people online to watch. Pick up a lot of pointers from a lot of other people time. And I still, I get on YouTube and I, 
I like watching um, like watching some of those old guys tie flies. Some of that is just unbelievable what they can come up with. Well, like I said, I thought I'd do a live YouTube video, see. See if there's different times. Yeah, I've done the same thing too. But I get a lot of people that also, uh, you know, say, hey, I watch all your videos. You know, I'm sitting at home, tying my own. And, you know, they'll thank me for putting the videos on YouTube. You know, and they'll message me with questions and stuff like that on how to tie different materials to use, where I get my materials at. But I was say one thing, if you are tying, definitely add the UV resin. You'll like it. it makes a super durable jig. You'll lose it. You'll hang it up in a tree way before it ever comes untied. That's enough to set that one up. I'm going to tie one more red and chartreuse one. That's how it comes out. I like tying bucktail jigs. I like using bucktail jigs. Um, just seem very durable, very durable. Let's see all we got on here. We got nine people on. We got five likes. Like I said, we might not do a very long video, but. Golden chartreuse is a good color. Uh, orange and chartreuse was a good color. I wasn't 100% sold on orange and chartreuse, and I had some guys from uh, Louisiana that were ordering jigs from me. Um, uh, Captain Will Williams was ordering them. Orange and chartreuse. He ordered a bunch of them, that his buddies ordered some. I tied me up some, and I went out, and first time I'm pretty sure I'd ever used that color combination. It's just unbelievable what I got off the orange and chartreuse. So I could imagine, I could imagine the golden chartreuse being the, about the same way, too. A lot of lakes are different. A lot of lakes got a color, you know, it just seems like... Some lakes produce really good on some colors and some lakes not so much on that color. And and then some lakes, it seems like it don't matter what color you use. They're all a little bit different. But it's always fun to get out and experiment. I like tying jigs for people that uh, don't really know what colors they want. And, you know, and I'll ask them what lake they're fishing and I'll get on the internet and I'll do a little research and find out a few things about the lake and uh, favorite colors, what people have been catching them on. You know, so... When I do get jig orders, sometimes I put quite a bit of work into them, a lot more than what people realize other than just tying the jigs, you know, I'll actually research the lakes that, that you're going to be fishing and try to find out. You know, I get a lot of people that fish live minnows and want to switch to vertical jig fishing, especially a lot of people that just got live scope uh, and not really sure, sure what color weight jig to use. So I'll do, like I said, I'll, I'll research it up. I'll look it up. I'll look up your lake find out a good color on it and try to match what's going on. The lakes around here that I fish a lot seem um, black and chartreuse, pink and white, solid whites, 
orange and chartreuse. A lot of, I've tied a lot of solid blacks for a lot of some of the lakes around here. Sometimes I get a color and somebody tells me what they want. I'm like, man, that is the craziest color combination I've ever heard of. It works for them. It's what they got confidence in. That's what, you know, I'll tie up. Yep, I like getting those orders where people don't really have in mind what they want and just tell me to pick the colors. It makes, I get a lot more creative like that. Kind of leaves me wide open on what I want to do. Like those custom orders. Finding gold Chanel is hard to do unless you're getting just a regular tinsel gold. Sometimes, I think the last time I got gold tinsel, I got like four or five cards of it like that. Um, and sometimes, let's see, this is from Cascade. It's copper, gold, black. It's got gold in it. It's got a little bit of black in it. Sometimes to match gold, I will try to use yellow. That's a yellow bronze, but it's got more of a gold look to it. And I end up using that a lot on gold colored jigs. Yeah, there's a card of it that I've used. A lot of times that ends up being my gold Chanel. And if I put a, enough of a gold tail in it, that yellow will look really gold underwater so I use that quite a bit that's my last red in chartreuse and we are going to do pink and chartreuse And we might do some rubber tails in this one. Let's see how that works out. Let's see what I got. I like doing YouTube videos. I like doing live YouTube videos. Uh, what I don't like about doing live YouTube videos is I can't. I've got no music playing in the background. I hate that. Drives me nuts. Drives me nuts quiet down here except for me talking to myself and talking to y'all. Well, I got plenty of pink. Put some pink skirts. Uh, and chartreuse. We're going to mix this one up. We'll make this one pretty cool. endless amount of stuff I've got scattered all over this shop and trying to find the colors and what I got pink thread I never have enough bobbins loaded up and ready to go yeah sometimes you find that right color Chanel you got to pile up on it because if you're like me you know you'll take an order for it get back home I realize you only got enough to tie a couple jigs with it. I try to do the same thing too. If I buy new Chanel and I, I know it's a color I like, I usually get at least four or five carbs of it. I always get four or five carbs of it.
we're going to use a pink body on this, so I'm going to go more chartreuse in the tail than I am pink. I'm going to do... five or six strands in chartreuse and then we'll do like two or three in pink and then we might swap it up and do a chartreuse body with a little more pink in the tail than chartreuse and see how that comes out let's even all that up just like that the only thing i don't use uve resin for is my base coat. I still use the Sally Hansons or I use um, uh, Hairline Devon's Hardest Hole head cement. And the reason I don't use the UV resin underneath, with that little bit of UV resin on the shank of that hook, it'll harden up and dry and it'll make it like a mirror underneath of it. So slick and smooth that you can't keep your body from turning it won't it don't want to set up on it so i still start out with the sally hansons or uh hairline devon's hardest hole head cement on the shank of the hook put my material on it i will use the uv resin when i'm done tying when i cure the neck but i, I use the uv resin a lot Uh, Mike Packer. Yeah, you're right. I get a lot of people here in Missouri that use my jigs for trout. And I like, I'll usually tie some up uh, really small, 64th, 132nd, 164th, 180th. I tie quite a few of those up, and I'm pretty sure they end up in trout streams. But I'm going to put a Chanel in this one, and I'll show you how I what I do with the UV resin on that. Throw some pink flash in that one. We're gonna be using pink crystal flash. If I get it unwound here. The thing about using the crystal flash is it'll kind of change colors based off what's closest to it. You know, you look at it one way and it might look chartreuse from the chartreuse in the tail. Look at it again, it might look pink. And for whatever reason, I come out almost looking more purple than it did any other color. And we are going to be using the Bug Shops Ultra Chanel in pink. UV rated. It shouldn't lose its color. When I put on my Chanel and I, I see a lot of people don't do this step. I still always do it. I rotate my jig up until all my thread and my plastics explodes right there or the hackle feather, whatever. That right there is the last spot I will use uh, the glue, you know, the Sally Hansen's or Hardest Hole Head Cement. Rotate it on right there to the end. And like I said, right there at that spot, that was the last spot where I'm going to be using the glue. After I get this wrapped up, and I'll be using the UV resin on it. A whip finish on it right here. Pull down again tight, cut that off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my UV resin. I'm going to get my brush cleaned off. I put my UV resin in this bottle because this has been the only brush that's held up to it. Take that brush and stick it back in there and get that into that thread right there where I can see where it's wet. Push it back up in there. 
brush the rest of the head because I've already got it out, so I might as well go ahead and harden the head with it also. And cure it. And you'll know when you got this hardened good because right there around the neck of that will get really tough. It'll be really hard feeling. You'll know you've got that thread coated. That UV resin is going to drain down. It's going to run down inside all that thread. It's going to soak that thread. So when you get it tied up, not only have you glued your thread, but you've glued the Chanel to the thread and to the head. The UV resin I use, and I'm going to show you why I put it in that bottle, is Solar Ease. The reason I put it in that bottle is this this was a bottle of uh, UV resin my wife had for fingernails. Once that guy ran empty, I took my Solar Ease and I filled that bottle up. I bought it in a little bigger container, but I threw that container away, but that's the name brand of it. So if you're looking for it at a fly shop or you're looking for it on Amazon, so it works Works good. It dries up pretty quick. And it will dry up so much faster and so much harder outside in the sunlight. So you gotta, you're gonna be tying jigs. Look on your weather app on your phone. It'll tell you your UV level for the day, whether it's gonna be high, low, moderate, even if the UV index is low for the day, it's still the sun will still cure it faster than this light will. Even if it's cloudy outside, it will harden that up so fast. So I usually get all my jigs. I get them all tied up. I brush them down. I hit them with light just a little bit so that way the UV resin don't run and get back into the eye of the jig head. Hang them on another rack, and I take them outside, and I set them on the back of my truck put a piece of aluminum foil underneath the little rack like this. I take that little rack. I lay a piece of uh, aluminum foil underneath of it, set that down right on top of it. Come back outside in three minutes and every one of those are just solid rock hard. I have faith in the UV resin. I do in the Sally Hansons. I used the help in Sally Hansen. I used the super glue. Uh, I kind of progressed over time and went from just regular super glue, Sally Hansen's hard as nails, hairline dubbins, hard as uh, whole head cement. That one, the UV resin works wonders. Just, it's unbelievable how good that ties up, hardens up how fast it hardens up. But I will take, when I first started using the UV resin, I coated the jig heads and I just come out here in the garage, just pick it up and drop it on the floor, 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 on the floor compared to just hardening them in the oven. You know, two or three drops on the concrete floor, I'd have just hardened out the oven. I was busting the paint off of them and the UV resin don't do that. It, it, it does exactly what it says it's gonna do. And I know there's a lot. I've gone through different bottles of UV resin. I've used um, some stuff from Hobby Lobby, I think. I've got a couple other bottles. The Solar Ease hardens faster than the rest of those do. The rest of them harden. Just the Solar Ease has got a lot faster cure time with it. So I like the Solar Ease, but I've not tried any other ones for you know, fly time, jig time, anything like that. Just uh, Plateau Fly Shop gave me a couple bottles to try, and I was really impressed with it. Works good. I like it. But definitely use that sunlight. Cash in on it. Yeah, I'll take them jigs out to get a suntan. The sun's out there... You know, it's shining even when it's, it's a cloudy day. It works better. It's going to save you a ton of money on batteries. And I know you can get these rechargeable. It takes forever to charge them back up. I've got, I've got this light. I've got another smaller light. I've got a one that you put your fingernails in. Women put their fingernails in to harden their fingernail polish. 
the sun is 10 times faster. Works a lot better. And I know there's a lot of people, oh, you can build a, you know, a UV box. I don't have the room for it and don't want to spend the time doing it. So, the sunlight's completely free. Completely free. Use it. It's out there. Not a lot of times I get I tie jigs when I get home from work at night. But like I said, I'll set them up, get them to where they're good and tacky with the flashlight, hang them up. The next morning I get up, take them outside, and um, let the sun do the work. How much does it cost to make each jig? You can break it down. You know, I broke it down before, and I don't. You know, if I get 100 jig heads, uh, $10 per 100 paints, I think $10 for three ounces material. Man, you're tying your own jigs. You're, you're not going to have much into them. Uh, I could break it down later and I could give you a price on each and every single one of them. But tying your own jigs, after you get the tools, the material, tying your own jigs is uh, a whole lot cheaper than buying them. I mean, you like I said, you break it down, you go, you know, ten dollars per hundred on jig heads. Um, ten dollars per hundred on jig heads. So break that down per jig head. Thirteen dollar. Well, if you go to Bass Pro and you buy paint, it's going to be thirteen dollars for two ounces. I don't know how many jigs heads you could paint with two ounces of paint. You could couple a thousand maybe something like that so you know you got maybe a half a penny or a penny tied up in your paint chanel that's gonna be the most almost maybe the most expensive part of your jig is gonna be your chanel uh, i get this stuff from plateau fly shop this is called uh it's from the bug shop it's ultra chanel it's uv uv plus meaning that it will hold up the uv sunlight it won't Colors won't fade quite as bad as a dollar sixty nine for three feet, three yards of that inside that bag. It takes. Let's see, two and a half inches maybe for your jig. Uh, flash, you can get your flash off of. I do one of the few things I get off Amazon is my flash. You get a pack of this with like 10 or 15 different colors in it for like 13 bucks. Packle feathers. It's kind of more of an expensive one. $7 for like a... Um, a small pack of them. But if you break down how much you're going to use out of that feather, probably get 100 jigs out of a pack. So if you're actually going to sit down and figure out how much you get per each, how much each jig head is going to cost you, it's, it's pretty low. It's extremely reasonable. Starting out with the vice, you can get the $20 vice, $25, $30 vice off Amazon. I used it for a couple years. Didn't have no issues with it. Still, it's right back around the back of my table. You can get a whole entire fly tying kit that comes with the vice, scissors, bobbins, um, I think it was like 50 bucks, comes in a little wooden box. 
your threads, $2 per spool maybe. It, it's really cheap. I promise, Jeff, it's it's uh, getting set up and getting all your stuff. You know, don't go out and buy a vise, buy all your tying material. Make sure it's something you want to do first and just slowly add on to it. I got 15-foot-long table here, and it is covered. I've got drawers, containers with hackle, all my stuff in it. You know, just slowly add on to it. Just keep what you got. Go get new colors every once in a while. You know, and if you fish the same lake and you know the colors you're going to use, you might not ever have to buy any other colors. But it's worth it. And the satisfaction of catching a, a fish off your own jigs is pretty cool. That kind of makes it worth it on its own, you know. We're going to finish this one up. I got a few other things I got to do today. Have I got this order done? I got to go pick up some envelopes. I can get this order in the mail tomorrow. I think we're going to wrap it up after this one. Unless anybody's got any questions, anything you want to bring up? No problem, Jeff. I appreciate answering it. Uh, you got any other questions about it? Anything about tying it? Anytime, send me a message. Let me know. I try to get, I try to respond to every single question I get on YouTube and I, I think I'm pretty good at it. I usually keep up with it. I try to. I get busy at work sometimes and uh, forget I get a message or an, even an order sometimes for that fact. So that's a pretty cool color combo right there. We will call that my version of the electric chicken inspired by the man himself, Mr. Wally Marshall, my electric chicken. Right there. It's easy. It's not hard. Like I said, if you're getting into it and you want to tie and you got questions, let me know. I'll answer them. I'll help you out as best I can. But I think I'm getting off here. Need to shut up and get this order done. Um, that's all I got, fellas. We'll see you next time.